here we are in the Columbus module. You can see it's uh, also spacious. It's also cluttered because uh, uh, it's a great place to store things or temporarily stow them. Uh, it's not going to be this way forever. We're going to have it nice and clean pretty soon. In these big bags right here are food containers. We have a lot of food on board. Not all of it's for our crew. It's for uh, future crews. And also there's still some food left from past crews. So we have to make sort it and make sure we don't waste anything if we can help it. Uh, this is uh, the Columbus module. It's, again, the pride of the European Space Agency. Uh, there's quite a few experimental racks in here. Uh, this is the microgravity science glove box. That's one of my favorites. Uh, I've been working on the shear experiment uh, from MIT and a few other places. Uh, we have the European drawer rack right over here. This is the FSL, Fluid Science Laboratory on the ceiling. And we have to be careful not to bump into it because it has some really neat experiments going on. Right now, this is a GeoFlow. We also have a few American racks in here, like the Express 3 rack right here. But at the bottom of the Express rack, we have the European Modular Cultivation System. So we have a really neat system here where everybody's sharing and working together. This is BioLab, where we're going to start uh, growing some uh, plants in the next couple weeks. the European Physiology Modules Facility. We haven't had a chance to use that on this mission yet. And then uh, the HRF, the Human Research Facility, rack number two. And uh, that has an ultrasound and a few other things that we use. So we use the refrigerated centrifuge also. Um, actually, the HRF2 doesn't have the ultrasound. It's this one, the HRF1 rack has the ultrasound on it. We're going to use that for the bracelet experiment coming up. Columbus. Okay, we started in Node 2. We're flying back to Node 2. We'll take a quick look what else we have here. We have my work area. It's a little bit uh, uh, cluttered right now. But this is kind of my desk. It doesn't sit out uh, horizontally. But, it's, it's, uh, but it has everything I need on it. This are my crew quarters right here. You can tell it has my name on it. And on top of it is a radiation monitor. These are new crew quarters. And in fact, I can give you a tour real quick of uh, crew quarters. Uh, Sandy put these uh, crew quarters together. This is what it looks like inside. There's a fair amount of room. We'll get the, uh, has a standard uh, space station light on it. GLA and I'll uh, see if I can give you guys a feel of what it's like in here. Of, uh, sockets and uh, outlets for a laptop if you need it and so in my in my uh, crew quarters I have a bracket on here and a laptop computer and it's very con it's very convenient and I can read my books at night it's great so that's the crew quarters it's uh, not very noisy inside there's a nice fan it's uh, pretty comfortable I get very good sleep there so now we're going into the Destiny Laboratory headed aft on the space station. And uh, there's uh, my crewmate, Sandy Magnus. She's getting her exercise in for today. And I'd like to show you a little bit of our equipment here. Uh, this rack is the oxygen generation system and uh, we have a few too many things on this rack and we're in the middle of cleaning it off, not, not to interfere, but you can see oxygen, we're making oxygen and when we make oxygen, we're breaking down water into hydrogen and oxygen, and the oxygen comes right out here. The water we're making it either comes from the condensate uh, from the air conditioning system, you know, the water that's in the air, or urine. So this is a really neat uh, bio, um, regenerative uh, uh, life support system. This is our toilet number two. We haven't uh, quite uh, gone there yet, so to speak, but uh, it's all set up and it is uh, ready to go. 
There's uh, where uh, you can do number two. And don't worry, I won't show you anything you're not supposed to see. And uh, there's a place for number two. And number one goes in a big funnel right here. Now we're say, whoa, well, there's no privacy here. And there isn't because we haven't put out, put at the cabin. The cabin's going to stick out really far. Speaking of sticking out far, because the cabin's going to stick out far, we've actually moved the Sevis over with the brackets called crab brackets because it actually moved the crab, it crabs it off to the side. This is uh, the uh, WRS rack number one, and it works closely in, in conjunction with WRS rack number two. WRS stands for Water Recovery System. On top of the Water Recovery System rack number two, we have the Total Organic Carbon Analyzer, the TOCA, and we have a spot uh, to take a urine tank, a Yedeveu, using a compressor, we send, uh, we send the urine through here, and uh, then it goes into the, into the urine processing assembly, which is uh, not working perfectly right now. So the, also, that's for the urine that comes uh, from the Russian uh, segment, from the, our main toilet. But the, this other toilet that we just uh, saw, the, the urine uh, can come from there directly into here. It gets uh, distilled and processed to pure water, which we can drink or it can be made into oxygen or used for other things. Here's a, a new thing also that we got was the express rack number six, which uh, one of my favorite uh, things on this rack. Hold drinks inside and keep things cold, which is the first time in a long time that we've had something like this on station. So you can see it's not very much room, but it's enough. It's definitely enough. Also, we have a glacier freezer. Um, that's not for food, it's for biological samples. And uh, we also have a potable water dispenser, which isn't certified for use yet, but uh, in the future, this is what we're gonna be able to have, uh, get, fill our drink bags and, and rehydrate our food from here. That's on the ceiling, by the way. We can definitely use uh, uh, three dimensions in space. So even though this is a big space station, it's even bigger because we use you know, the ceiling and the floors also. This is the robotics workstation for the laboratory module. This is where we do our robotics from. You can see that uh, we have uh, our, our monitors here. Uh, we even have uh, potential to put uh, two more monitors when the shuttle comes, so we have a lot of a lot of use. Eventually, in the next year or so, we're going to have uh, the cupola on on our next node, node three. And the cupola will be able to look outside. It has a lot of very beautiful windows. And then we have a robotics workstation, this one, the cupola robotics workstation that'll fit there. We have a lot of computers everywhere. We have a printer, old fashioned, but it works. And now we're gonna go back into one of the first modules, node one, which is also called Unity. This thing that's kind of blocking our view is the advanced resistive exercise device and it's uh, we put it together recently and we're still checking it out it still needs to be calibrated but once it gets calibrated we'll be exercising here every day and it's big this is a really huge device but it also can get twice as much uh, twice as much uh, chances to work out I think uh, most people would say that the I read the interim, in, interim resistive exercise device. You can maybe go up to two or three hundred pounds. This one has the potential to go up to six hundred pounds. So uh, it's uh, it, you can get much b bigger loads. It works by using a vacuum system. So uh, you can see these two big vacuum canisters right up here. And you can see as I float backwards in the node one here, you can see how big that A-RED is and how much it takes, how much room it takes up.